Hey guys, so for today's video, I'm gonna be doing a very long overdue library checkout. You see what I did there? You see, log overdue. Ah. But yes, it has been a while, so that means that there have been a lot of books. However, there are going to be exceptions, which I'm going to go over right now. The first is that a couple of these books I've read only because they were required of me for school, and I'm not gonna be going over those. I'm just gonna leave them out because I'm pretty sure no one wants to hear about them. But if people are interested in me talking about like plays or classic literature that I may be reading for class, then that'd be great to know. But otherwise, in this episode, that's not gonna be happening. The other thing that I want to mention is that I've been reading a lot of manga, and and a lot of them have been part of the same series and so I don't want to do the same thing I did with Death Note in which I kind of go over every single book as I go along so I'm just gonna be talking about the series as a whole and then when I finish the series of manga books I'm just going to kind of talk about how I liked everything as a whole so with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to begin with Big Hero 6 which is by Haruki you know and the Walt Disney Company, and it's obviously based around the movie Big Hero 6. I gave both of these 5 out of 5. It's just such a good small series. If you like Big Hero 6, you're going to love this book because it's essentially the same storyline in which there's a very smart kid and he ends up going to the same college as his brother and they compete in a science fair. They both make these really great inventions. The only thing that they changed was... This is gonna be... A, this isn't like a spoiler spoiler unless you haven't seen the movie, but one of the characters, not gonna say who, one of the characters dies and they changed how they died from the movie. So that's the only thing that's really significantly different. I think they also have taken out a couple of the details and they mainly gave a really big focus to the big actions with the movie. This one was more like there was the big action part but then the other half of the second manga, the ending, was more around like the after effects and stuff of Hero's life. So that was interesting. I kind of liked being able to see more into what happened to Hero after and I liked the details that they gave about his schooling because there was more details about how he was in class. But yeah, I just thought it was really really cool. I really liked all everything about it. Following that, I read Scott Pilgrim Precious Little Life by Brian Lee O'Malley and I gave this. I believe I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. So it's about this guy named Scott Pilgrim and he has this best friend and he's starting to date this 17 year old girl. I believe he's like 25 or something. He meets this girl that he saw in a dream named Ramona and he has a really big attraction to her and he wants to start to date her. Yes, it was 5 out of 5. In this first section is when they kind of start to see where things are going. Like as Scott is dating Ramona, he has to defeat all of her past seven evil exes. And it is the beginning of the whole series that shows all the rest of them. In terms of what I thought about this, I really, really liked it. I actually, I didn't read these before watching the movie. I only ever heard of the movie and then I watched it and I thought it was really, really cool. I really liked it just right off the bat. But then actually reading it, I thought that it was actually very, very close to all the people who were in the movie. I thought that it was, you know, thinking about it, I think it was great cast and stuff like that and very much aligned with how the comic goes and I just overall really liked it. It's funny. I love the art style of it. I love that like same cartoony kind of art style. It was just all around really really good. So after that I read the third book in the Raven Cycle series called Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater and this one follows obviously the end of the second book after things seem to be dealt with in terms of Mr. Gray's old boss and his wife and all of that kind of stuff. You have to forgive me I can't remember the names right now. After that it turns out that they are not done yet and they have come to try and again gain what Ronin is in order to have their own needs met. And so it's kind of them dealing with that and trying to deal with this guy and all of the horrible stuff that he can do to people because apparently he's just like one of those all powerful like mob pre people. There are certain relationship developments and certain character developments that move along the plot as well. During this time Mara is also missing who is Lou's mom and it really takes a toll on her and they're trying to figure that out as well. All the while, they're still hunting for this Welsh king and they seem to be getting closer and closer every single time that they've been going out and it's just 
a lot of fun stuff happening, but I think that it works really, really well. So in terms of what I thought about this book, I gave it five out of five because it's it's amazing. It's a very well done book. It's very well written. All the characters develop very well also. And I know that I keep saying well all the time, but it's true. I like the fact that you get to see more of Gangzi in terms of being a human being because you do get that throughout the series, but I think in this book in particular, you kind of get to see it more. I really like seeing Gangzi's vulnerability because he does tend to be kind of closed off and he does, not closed off, but he does tend to kind of like exude this air about him that he's very well kept together but he's not not entirely and I think that that's really great to open up about and I think it goes for all of the Raven boys really. I really like that Adam was able to open up and kind of see that his friends really do care about him and that Ronan's also able to kind of become more, I want to say human, but I, that just seems odd. Like, he just seems like he's always so rigid and strong and like always aren't ready for a fight. But like in this book, it kind of shows his more sensitive side, which I also really, really liked. The relationship developments that happen in this book are so, so, so great. I love, love what is happening between two characters and I'm super pumped for it. I really also liked that we could see more of Mr. Gray because I actually really like him as a character. I think that he's a good, not anchor, but he's just a good part of the book and hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Come on. <coughs> ah, God bless me. In terms of everything else that I really, really liked or didn't like, I really, really, really hate Piper, who is the wife of Mr. Gray's old boss and oh, I so don't like her but I think that like really hating villains is what makes them so great so that's even just the surface of what I'm gonna read and I'm going on to the fourth book so I'm super 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 excited to see how everything wraps up and then I will go over how I love the entire series over and over again because who can't wait to hear about the Raven Cycle every time Natalie does one of these. So following that, I read Full Metal Alchemist, which is a manga series and it is about these two brothers who are alchemists and when they were younger, they tried this alchemy ritual thing in which they tried to bring their mother back to life and the rule that is kind of reiterated in this first volume of the manga is that to do alchemy it has to be equal trade and so they had to give something that was of equal value to their mother's life but the cost of that was Alphonse's life and in order to at least have his soul Ed who is the older brother gave up two of his limbs one leg and one arm and so now he has a metal arm and a metal leg and Alphonse's soul is housed in a suit of armor and they are now trying to kind of remedy what they have done and they're going through this whole journey to figure it out and hopefully get what they want. Now I gave the series 5 out of 5 stars because I loved the anime when I was younger. I watched the whole thing with my brother and it was amazing. It's such a good series, so, so incredibly well done. I just loved everything about this. I like that there are funny parts about it. I like that it kind of touches on kind of interesting values in terms of like the whole equal values thing. I liked that whole aspect about it. It was, it's, it's great. I love the characters. I love how the story develops. I like that they always think that like Ed's like this little kid because he's so much smaller than the suit of armor that he walks around with, Alphonse. And like, it's just, I don't know, I thought those, that is, it's a nice comic break. And I do 100% recommend the series, whether it's the anime, whether it's the manga, read it, watch it. It's so, so good. So after that, I read One Punch Man by One and Yuksuke Marata. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then I didn't actually say who Full Metal Alchemist was by, so that's by Hiromu Arkawaya. No, Arakawa. And Urka One. So this is about a man who, after saving someone, decided to become a hero. And he trained and got so immensely strong that not only did he lose all the hair on his head, like eyebrows, eyelashes, everything, he's just totally bald, he is able to defeat his opponents in one punch. He's kind of become a little bit bored because he doesn't get that much of a challenge because he's so fucking strong that he could just knock you 
Naki to Timbuktu when you'd be done. And it's talking about like the origin story and then it kind of goes through, again, his feelings, but it also kind of shows generally what kind of happens when he gets involved in city disasters and all that kind of fun stuff. In terms of what I thought about it, I really did like it. I only gave it four out of five stars though because initially it felt a little weird and I don't really know how to explain that. It just felt a little bit weird and off initially, but overall I did really like it because I kind of got used to the style. I kind of got used to how everything was in terms of the humor and everything like that. So I overall just really recommend it. It's, it's actually quite funny. So go read it. Surprise, surprise, this is another manga and I started the series Cowboy Bebop. And if you don't know what this is about, it's about these three bounty hunters and their like research person and a dog. Research person's name is Ed. And the dog is named, I think, Einstein, and then they call him Ein. Then there's Spike, Jet, and... Oh my gosh, how do I not remember her name? Spike, Jet, Faye! That's it. And they are bounty hunters, and this is set in the future, and so they try to capture these criminals and make money, and a lot of time it doesn't go their way, but sometimes it does, and it just follows their story and how they deal with everything. I gave the first one 4 out of 5, but overall I, after that I gave them 5 out of 5 because there's only 3 books in this series and I just really, really liked it. I initially, again, it was the same thing. Sorry about that, my camera was gonna give out. But anyway, initially, I was the same thing with One Punch Man, where I kind of felt a little off, and I was like, especially because at one point there was like, like rape insinuation in like one part because one of the characters gets himself arrested so that he can break into jail and get this person out of jail in order for them to make money off of a bounty. And like, there's like a, there's like, a part where it's like borderline rape and I'm like ooh, ooh, ooh. But anyway, that looked like I was gonna go into labor. Anyway, story. I just think that they're really good and that they kind of balance each other out because Faye is like this really like beautiful girl and she's snarky and snappy and then there's Jet who is like the old veteran who used to work for the police in the ISS ISP and there's Spike who's just this really cool and aloof guy and Ed's super hyper and just like totally kind of zany but she's also like really smart and crazy smart. I like that they kind of don't give Ed a gender. Like they, like there's one part in one of the books that's like, oh, who's that? Oh, are they a boy or a girl? And they're like, they're just Ed. And I just, I don't know, I kind of like that. I felt like this book was kind of like almost ahead of its time because a lot of the things that I read in there related to things that we are dealing with now. It's just, it's so interesting. I really, really liked everything about it. Again, the first start was just a little off, but after you kind of get used to everything and how it flows and stuff, then it's just, it's really, really good. Absolutely, absolutely recommend. After that, I read Oran High School Host Club, which is a parody essentially about like romantic tropes in anime and I actually watched the entire anime first and I really really like it. I definitely recommend it but I've been reading Oran High School Host Club and so the basic gist of it is that there is a girl named Haruhi. Hold on, I feel like I have to sneeze again. All right, it's gone. She starts to go to this very expensive, like highly esteemed school that she's on a scholarship for because she's like crazy smart. She walks into a music room and accidentally breaks the club's vase that was worth so much money. I think it was like, I think it's like 8 million yen. And so the host club is kind of like, well, to pay back your debt, like you should be with us. And so the host club essentially is just these bunch of guys who entertain girls and kind of make them feel special and you know, all that kind of stuff. I think there's six other guys who are in this host club and it kind of just follows them and their shenanigans and how they begin to kind of open up and show more of themselves because Haruhi is now in their life and she's kind of like a good balance in terms of being able to kind of ground them since they are so, I wanna say snotty, but like, yes, they are kind of stuck up and her being introduced kind of grounds them and it's kind of that whole development. In terms of what I thought about it, again, 
I love the the anime and so I really really love the series. I think that it's really funny and I think that it's super cute and I enjoyed it quite a lot. Actually, by the way, this is by Bisco Hattori. The structure of this is the only thing that bothers me and that is that it seems very cluttered in terms of the layout because when the actual comic is being laid out, when you're reading like a square, there's so much happening because there's so many characters and there's so many little like side notes and set jokes that you have to read through a whole lot of it and it just seems very cluttered and like I feel like it should be cleaned up a little bit more but obviously you know they're already printed so I can't do anything about it but that's the only weird thing that I don't like about it. Other than that the series is great. I love all of the characters so much. Absolutely absolutely 100% recommend. After I finished that I read a comic it is not a manga, and it is Fat Man The Killing Joke by Alan Moore, Brian Boland, and Tim Sale. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. What at High School Host Club that 5 out of 5. This one kind of follows the origin story of the Joker. The Joker's up again to his shenanigans, and Batman finds out that he kidnaps the commissioner, I think. It's overall quite disturbing because of the content that's in it, but it shows the background of how the Joker came to be. It kind of does a little bit of a flashback thing. In terms of, again, how I thought about it, it was it was kind of disturbing. I get it that it's the Joker and whatnot, but it was just like a bit throwing for me. This was just like really intense. Also, the art style like creeped me out a little bit. I mean, not to say that it wasn't good or whatever, but I'm just saying that it was a little bit creepy and I think that it added to the effect of how creepy and horrible everything was. Again, you know, it, it the, the story is the Joker and he's a disturbed, disturbed fucking psycho man and, you know, it's kind of expected. So, it was just okay. Um, I think that you can certainly read it if you want, but you know, it was just kind of okay for me. Jumping from that, I read Attack on Titan. And this is by... I'm butchering all of these names, I'm sorry. Hajime... Hajime Isayama? And Shelj... Sheldon Jeruska. I've been recommended this series for a very, very, very long time. I keep hearing from everybody how great and amazing it is. And if you don't know what it's about, it's about these people. It's kind of, well, not just people. It's like the last of humanity who are living inside of these giant walls of the city. And so they're trying to protect themselves from these giant titans. They've been protected for like a hundred years and then all of a sudden these giants are able to finally like get through the wall to eat the human beings and it's them trying to go on the defense trying to like survive essentially is what this entire anime is about. I think that I'm going to continue to read it because I want to see how the series goes and I want to give it its full good try but it is kind of disturbing. It's kind of disturbing because especially the thing that oh this is gonna be a spoiler. It's just when I read those things or when I see those kind of things it really hits me because i'm not totally like like i'm not desensitized to gore i know a lot of people are and so if they see something horrible they're kind of just like oh yeah that's a that's a thing like for me since i don't watch a lot of horror movies since i don't read a lot of those kind of gory things it hits me harder because i'm like oh my gosh that person just had to go through that i kind of like where it's going though, I do want to see how everything happens because it left off on a very interesting note. I'm gonna give it a fair shot. And then finally I was able to actually read a novel, guys. And I finished the Wrath and the Dawn series with The Rose and the Dagger, again by Renee Adihe. And when I actually explained The Wrath and the Dawn and the Dawn, I explained it horribly. So we will do this book a lot better. So after the last book, the city is in shambles. Khalid and Shahrazad are separated and everything's kind of going to shit. Khalid's city is being threatened because there's an army that's going to rise up against him and on top of that, everyone's trying to deal with all that kind of stress. Shahrazad is trying to help Khalid in any way that she possibly can. The dad is getting really pop, like power hungry. It's very intense. Now, in terms of what I thought about this, so good, so good. I did give it 4 out of 5 though, because I didn't really particularly like the ending. Sorry, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. <sighs> I hate feeling this way. 
I didn't like the ending. There's actually not the entire ending. I didn't like a certain part of the ending that involves the dad. It just seems like it's very, very random. It doesn't feel like an organic part of the book. It felt as almost like the dad, everything that he was and everything that he's about was just kind of like an afterthought and it's like, oh, we need to wrap him up, hold on, hold on. So I didn't like that. That was really what made it knock down to four because like, even though the rest of the book is good, I think that the ending like really needs to like, have a good punch, have a good punch line, and that kind of ruined it. It was kind of like a curvy punch line. But everything else I really, really liked. Khalid and Charizard's relationship. I really like theirs in terms of like, they don't ever really try to change each other. Yes, they've complained like, oh, you're so stubborn, oh, you do this. But they don't ever actually try to change who the other person is. They love them for exactly who they are and they're really understanding of each other. I also really liked Ursa's whole storyline because in the first book, you were only ever introduced to her. You only ever see her as Charizard sees her kind of and she's just like a minor character but like when you read this second book you get more into like who she is and she also has her own thing going on and I think that's really great because I liked being able to see more of her. I really really enjoyed this series. I 100% recommend it. I think it's absolutely fabulous. So now that all that is said and my throat is basically a desert, thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's not too long. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And if you want to see some more videos from me, then please do hit subscribe. I post every Saturday, unless said otherwise, in which case you should follow my Twitter. All the links and stuff will be down in the doobly doo Thank you again so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye. So I just got the photo ops back and they look so good. I mean, I mean.